Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is another episode of Doing Stuff, the show where I just kind of aimlessly do things and that I don't really have plans for in any larger grand sense, so I have to put them somewhere, so I'll put it here. <clears throat> That's pretty much what this whole thing is about. This particular one is about uh, something that I refer to as ancient vocoder tech. Um, I, re I put out a, a demo recently, a, a thing, a... Uh, the very last one, it was called Ancient Vocoder Tech, and I was had lots of cool sounds in there that were done using the old ass, not Vocodex, Vocoder in FL, the Freddy Vocoder. Now, what's I, what I've discovered that's a little bit interesting is that like, um, along with other other things like, for example, the Slicer and Slice X, and you know, the Vocoder and Vocodex, like the X versions are the ones that are a little bit more thought out and fleshed out versus the um, original ones. However, the original ones still have mostly had the the total core functionality that we were looking for. Um, in this case, the vocoder d did most of what the vocodex does. Um, but the reason why I'm using it now is because it actually does something that real vocodex does not do. It has everything to do with um, the min max and the scale positions here. So a regu the regular vocoder does this, 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 this you know same idea different different amounts of bands that it's chopping up into. And like right there is a is an example of why that that can be pretty cool. We're, ba we're, ba we're basically turning the vocoder that's present here into a very uh, active kind of like almost a comb filter, not quite like a little little comb filter because they're not designed using the same filter filter types. Um, because in this case, it's a collection of bandpass filters. And this is, we're basically just manipulating them in space like that through 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 these here. I'm just doing it. This is just a naked saw wave that I have going on in here. And you have the same basic controls that you do in Vocodex. You have the bandwidth control, which is straight up just controlling the bands. It's very straightforward there. You can see that happening there. Now, in Vocodex, there's the band distribution window where you can change per band, where the is where the bands go. And this actually is still present here, but with a different kind of control medium. Um, for example, the scale thing here. Watch what happens when I mess with that. If it's not totally clear what's happening here, it's basically changing the weighting of where of where the bands kind of sit. So like the band, there'll be more bands in the high end, less in the low end, or more in the low end, less in the high, depending on how I arrange them. As you can see, moving it around it causes quite a bit of mayhem, especially with the, the sharper filter types and the larger uh, band count. You can see it happening in, in the display here. On top of that, though, there's still the min and max settings, which still actually contribute to the same idea. The min and max basically control the range at which these bands can fit. And then the format control basically controls where the bands are offset. Scale as a as a parameter doesn't really seem like it's designed to be to actually be moved as such. It's not really it's not very smooth, but it's still you can still move it and put it in there. But like I've also experimented with actually moving it as well, and it still does work even though it's a bit, it does come out a bit janky. Where this is this is important is because while we can we can actually do more than this in Vocodex in terms of that we can we can move the, move the bands and create shapes that are way different than just the scale type and whatever. We can't automate them. We can't automate that motion in Vocodex, but we can here, and that causes some extremely interesting behavior. So here's the project um, that I was we, we were doing in, in in that demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. 
This guy's a good example of the stuff working out. So here I'm automating the min and max settings to come to kind of move around a bit. And then I'm, I've felt working a whole bunch of times. I'm doing some more, and this time I'm moving the scale. Oh, just a min and max. And like this, this is basically like we're high passing a, a comb filter, but instead of actually just attenuating the comb filter, we're moving the bands to be closer together. And this causes that phaser like flangering feeling move, movement. Um, and, and mostly because it's doing mostly what a flanger and phasers do, like in terms of like the direct result, the phased kind of the resonant uh, peaks of a thin band, sharp filtered uh, collection of filters. That kind of phase change is what the fighters and phasers do. That's why the, the results seem very similar, especially like on these guys, which I muted. Like these guys here. This is a, a very like direct and a serious expression of moving a lot of things really fast. And those, that's all just from automating that particular vocoder. Like, so like th th this control, like this, this is a very dense one because I have all the bands on there. You can even kind of see it doing it. Come up here with this guy. This is a very, it's a higher pitch sound. So the, that's why the effects of the bands are up there. Do anything weird, anything weird with it? I don't think. It is. So that high pass coming in, like the, there, I think there is an actual literal high pass filter in here somewhere. No, nope, that's just unless I'm doing it here. Nope, that's that's the vocoder basically high passing itself because we're changing the range of the bands that exist. That range change is really what like is making this the cool like the cool sounds, and the rest of these are are based on that principle. Like this guy is all this is all one sound. See, this one's moving the, the scale, the min max, and the foreman. So, like, that's that's we're getting a lot, lots of lots of motion out of that. And like every little tiny tweak to each of those sort of takes an expected sound, like kind of like the high passy kind of the range change that we we're doing earlier. Like, it sounds kind of like the wah pedal kind of thing. But that wah, if you wanted to turn it to a slightly more complex vowel sound, moving those parameters even a little bit will kind of make that change for you. Like, for example, this is a saw to square change here, which is why we're getting that smooth and then not smooth. So this is the starting frequency, this is the ending frequency, so it gets darker when this, this comes down. Like so. Because right now it's going down up at the same time. And there's the this is the scale movement here. It's like this is still controlling the beginning and the ending, but this is controlling what the beginning and what like what's in the middle of the beginning and the ending. The distribution of the bands in there. And then this is just um this is the band this is the bandwidth control as well. The bandwidth which just changes the width of the bands. The really thin band is what gets us that kind of glassy sound. Um, and then the format is the overall offset of the whole thing. So all of these things are just changing the quality and position, I guess, of a cloud of bandpass folders, and that's what that sounds like. <laughs> Once you also do things like distort it and, you know, EQ and compress it and that kind of stuff. But even without all that, it's quite clear. <laughs> if we could hear it. It's pretty direct. I mean, this is just a, this is just extremely like making it just very loud. More or less, already sounds like that. And a lot of these starting sounds, like they, there are differences in them. Like I believe this one has some stuff going on. Like I'm using layers here because um, uh, the voca the old vocoder actually doesn't work in Patcher. Um, it's an old plugin. Not so not super surprised. But the uh, 
limit there's a limitation there and also there's other limitations because the older vocoder um was only left right encoding which means that it took the left channel as the carrier you could t you could you know change it which one's which but that's how it determines what's the carrier what's the modulator what's in the left channel what's in the right channel that's how the, those are the two channels um and the new, newer Vocodex, you can do that, but it also can take two different entire signals and combine them with stereo. So, but if you want to do stereo with this, you have to have more than one, um, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, in, the, in the case of the sounds here, I just did all my stereo processing in post with like reverb and delays and that kind of thing. I didn't worry about uh, stereo coming from the actual source sounds themselves. But um, yeah, so this is that's what I've been working on. I'm working on working on basically using uh, the old vocoder as a very expressive comb filter bank. Um, and I haven't quite used this to its fullest extent. Like I, I haven't, I have, for, I have not, for example, uh, messed around with actually using these changes on a real carrier, a real modulator rather. And so, cause right now I'm, I'm modulating itself. Just this, the carrier is its own modulator, but um, I haven't tried using it like, with like, like a traditional vocoder. And it, it's really very funny that I, did, I actually didn't know this about this old vocoder until now because um, uh, the, the, by the time I knew what a vocoder was, and even to use it on a bass sound at all, um, Vocodex was already around. That because Vocodex isn't that um, new, so like I really just missed getting getting super familiar with um, the older vocoder, which yeah, two thousand nine, not not that not that old, but yeah. So like I, I ended up missing key functionality from the original vocoder, like being able to change the scale and the min max and all this stuff in real time through automation, which gets you to express this emotion that you can't really get with the original the, the Vocodex, because while it does give you um, more intense morphing options, because like in in the distribution window, like this is basically what the the, um, the scale change is doing. It's moving either the majority of them in one direction or the majority in the other direction. But of course, in this window, you can do much more complicated things in that and create configurations that are absolutely impossible in the old one. Like Vocodex is very clearly the superior vocoder in, in just about every way. The one limitation being that because we're using a line a line uh, window to do this, we can't automate it, and like that didn't uh, probably didn't seem like something that was very important back when in 2009 when nobody had been thinking about doing this kind of sound design, but uh, now I find this to be something that's like just cool as hell to experiment with, um, and but so yeah, they'll be they'll be high to bases using this and like uh, this this song that I'm, I hope I'll actually finish. And have uh, making ups for that kind of thing, but I want to put this video out there so that people can investigate for themselves using the old ass ancient vocoder tech. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.